fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hey! Dan Reed, 14-year-old nephew of the Lone Ranger, was returning from a trip to Pecos to the town of Silverton. As he rode along in the stagecoach, he observed the two other passengers in the coach, a woman about 30 and a little girl about 10 years of age. Finally, the little girl spoke. I'm Diana Weeks. What's your name? Diana, you mustn't be so outspoken. Oh, that's all right, ma'am. I'm Dan Reed. I'm going to Silverton. Oh, so are we. Aren't we, Mom? Yes, dear. Do you live in Silverton, Dan? I'm staying near there with friends. Oh, I see. Maybe you've heard of the Circle X Ranch. Yes, I have. I think Mr. Hiram Weeks owns that ranch. Yes, he does. He's my father-in-law, Diana's grandfather. Oh. We're going to live with Grandpa. He sent for us to come and stay with him. My daddy died, and my grandpa wrote that we should come to the Circle X to live. That's right. My husband was a deputy sheriff in Pecos. He was shot down by outlaws a few months ago. Diane is quite excited about living on a big ranch like the Circle X. I understand it's one of the biggest in the territory. Yes, it is. I guess Mr. Weeks will be glad to have you staying there. I hope so. Frankly, he didn't approve of our marriage at the time, and my husband had to leave home and make his own way. I was surprised to hear that Mr. Weeks wanted us to come. Well, maybe he's changed a lot since then. I guess it must be that. He's never seen Diana. I wonder what Grandpa's like. Do you know Dan? No, Diana, I don't. I've never met him. But I'm sure he'll like you. Oh, golly, I'm glad you think so. I just know I like Grandpa. Of course you will, dear. It's very kind of him to offer to give us a home. How soon will we arrive in Silverton, do you know, Dan? We're almost there now, ma'am. Oh, really? I feel a little nervous about meeting Mr. Weeks after all these years. I suppose he'll have someone meet him. Oh, I'm sure he will. The ranch is some distance from town. After we get settled, Dan, perhaps you'll come to see us. If you really want me to, I will. Please do. We won't know anyone there, will we, Mama? That's right, dear, we won't. But I'm sure we'll soon make friends. We had so many friends in Pegasus, we just hated to leave. You'll like the people around, Silver, and I'm sure of that. Oh, we're crossing the wooden bridge outside of town. We'll be at the stage stop in a few minutes. Well, don't forget. You'll come to see us at the Circle X Ranch and make it soon, Dan. Now we'd better get our things together so as to be ready to get off and meet Diana's grandfather.
After the stage arrived and Dan had bid goodbye to his newfound friends, he went to the livery stable where he had left his horse, Victor. A short time later, he arrived at the camp in the hills, which he shared with Lone Ranger and Tonto. Oh, ho, Victor, ho, boy, ho! Easy, boy, steady, fella. Oh, hey, Dan. It's good to see you. Hi, Tonto. Well, Dan, have a nice trip. Oh, yes, sir, but I'm glad to be back just the same. Well, we missed you. Ah, uh, that right. But golly, I missed you and Tonto, too. And I always miss having Victor to ride. I guess riding the stage is rather tiresome. Oh, uh, did you travel alone? Well, going to Pecos, I was the only passenger, but coming back, there were two others. Mrs. Weeks and her 10-year-old daughter, Diana. They're awfully nice, and they're going to live with Mr. Weeks at the Circle X Ranch. She's Diana's grandfather. I see. Yes, Hiram Weeks did have a son. He settled near Pecos. Yes, sir. Diana's father died not long ago, and Hiram Weeks sent for them to come here and stay with him. Glad to hear it, then. Means Hiram Weeks has finally come to his senses. He turned against his son when he married Ruth Connors, a schoolteacher. Uh, Mrs. Weeks told me about that. I guess she's relieved to have a place to go. I guess they didn't have anything left after Diana's father was killed. Oh, how him get killed, Dan? He was a deputy sheriff at Pecos. He was shot down by outlaws a few months ago. Oh, that's right. I heard about that. I guess his son's death made Hiram Weeks realize how stubborn he'd been. Golly, I hope so, but... Oh, uh, what were you going to say, Dan? Well, I was there when Hiram Weeks met them at the stage stop. He looked so stern and... Well, the way he acted toward Mrs. Weeks made me wonder. Oh, tell us about it. Well, at first, when we got out of the stage, there wasn't anyone to meet Diana and her mother. And then I saw a heavy-set, stern-looking man get out of the buckboard and walk toward us. He went straight up to Diana and spoke. Well, well, I guess you must be my son's little girl, Diana, eh? Yes, sir. I am. I mean, I am if, if you're Grandpa. Grandpa Weeks. Yep, that's who I am. I'm mighty glad to have you come to the Circle X, girl. Mighty glad. Diana's been quite excited about coming, Mr. Weeks. Yeah. Oh, yes, it's you, Ruth Connors. I reckon I sort of overlooked that you were coming along. My name isn't Ruth Connors. I'm Jim's widow, you know. My name is Mrs. Jim Wheat now. Not to me, it ain't. Who's your boy? Uh, my name's Dan Reed. We met on the stage. Yes, Dan's been very nice to us. I invited him to come out to the ranch to see us sometime. I don't reckon I like having you invite strangers you meet along the trail to come to the but ranch. But I want Dan to come see us, Grandpa. Oh, you do, eh? Well, now, if you want him to come out, I reckon it'll be all right, Diana. Miss Connors, you and Diana get in the buckboard. I'll get your luggage. Just a minute, Mr. Wheat. Yeah. I thought when you invited us to come to stay with you that you'd forgotten, or at least decided to forget the feeling you had. I said get in the buckboard. I don't aim to argue with you, ma'am. I'll get the luggage now. Oh, Diana, I wish we hadn't come. Why, Mama? Don't you like Grandpa? Don't you? Never you mind, Diana. You just forget what Mama said. Dan, I don't know how you feel about it, but I do hope you will come out to see us sometime. All right, Mrs. Weeks. I'll come out sometime. Thank you, Dan. Come, Diana. We'll go to the buckboard now. Goodbye, Dan. And don't forget your promise to come to see us. Seems as though Mrs. Weeks isn't going to have a very pleasant time. Ah. Uh. That right. Do you think I really should go out sometime and see how they're getting along, sir? Well, since you promised you would, Dan, and since Hiram Weeks doesn't object to you going to see Diana, sure it will be all right. In fact, I'll be curious to know if Weeks has changed any in his attitude toward his daughter-in-law since meeting her. It was the following morning that the purpose behind Hiram Weeks' invitation for Ruth and her daughter to live at the Circle X began to take form. Ruth went to Diana's room to awaken her. Finding that Diana was already up, she went to the kitchen and spoke to the ranch cook, Maggie. Maggie, I noticed Diana's already up. I'll go find her while you put on her breakfast on the table. Sure, and the little girl has had her breakfast. Mr. Weeks woke her to have breakfast with him and then took her to town on the buckboard. Oh, I see. I wonder why I took her into town so early. Well, now, in the master's own words, he says, uh, Maggie, I'm buying me little granddaughter the finest clothes I can find in Silverton. And from now on, he says, my son's daughter will have everything she wants to make her happy. Dear, I hope it doesn't spoil Diana. Sure, it is. No one can tell Mr. Weeks one way or the other what he's to do, Miss Connors. He's a determined man, that he is. Please, Maggie. My name is Mrs. Weeks. Uh, sorry, ma'am, but 
There's the orders of the master that you be called Miss Connors. And there's all me job's worth to go against him. I see. I'll have your victuals on the table in a jiffy, ma'am. No. No, never mind, Maggie. I, I'm not hungry right now. I'll go outside and walk a bit until Diana comes. <laughs> During the following week, Diana, childlike, took full advantage of her newfound freedom and of the power she seemed to have over her grandfather. Anything she could think of was hers for the asking, including a pony. And Hiram Weeks contrived to keep her busy, having her with him almost continually as he rode about the ranch and took trips to town. Meantime, Ruth was treated like a stranger by Hiram and the ranch hands, and her worry increased as she saw less and less of her daughter. One day, she sat disconsolately on the ranch house porch, wondering how to cope with the situation, when Dan Reed reined to a halt before her. Oh, hold it, hold boy. Easy, fella. Steady, boy. Dan Reed? Oh, how glad I am to see you. Hello, Mrs. Weeks. How's Diana? Oh, Diana's fine. She's out riding with her grandfather. You see, she... Oh, Dan, I know this is no way to talk to a mere boy, but I must talk to someone. Someone who's friendly to me. What? What's the matter, ma'am? Everything, Dan, just everything. I'm dreadfully unhappy, and I just don't know which way to turn. Golly, is there anything I can do? Perhaps if I talk to you about it, it'll help. You see, Dan, I'm treated like a stranger here. Mr. Weeks has ordered everyone on the ranch to call me by my maiden name. He won't receive me here as his son's widow. Gosh. Since we've been here, I've seen very little of Diana. He showers her with gifts and attention, keeping her with him all the time. What's more, he's made arrangements to send her to St. Louis in two weeks to attend a private girls' school. Does Diana want to go? Well, her grandfather's made it all seem wonderful to her so that now she's excited over going there. I, I don't know what I'll do after she leaves. I just can't stay here. I, I feel so helpless and friendless. I'd like to be your friend, Mrs. Weeks. Maybe if I tell a couple of my friends about it, they could help in some way. Oh, Dan, if they only could... I see now why Jim's father brought us here. So he could take Diana away from me and make it seem as though she wants it to be that way. If there was only something I could do to stop it. But there doesn't seem to be any way. I'll tell my friends and see what they think about everything. Don't worry, Mrs. Weeks. Maybe things will turn out all right. I'll go now, but I'll come back and see you again. Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye, Dan. And thank you for coming out. Easy, boy. Steady, fella. Come on, Victor. Dan Reed left the Circle X Ranch and returned to the camp where the Lone Ranger and Tonto had been staying for some time while they put new shoes on the horses and mended worn riding gear. Dan told them what he had learned from Ruth Weeks. Golly, I, I sure feel sorry for Mrs. Weeks. She doesn't know what to do. Hiram is taking an underhanded way to get back at Ruth for marrying his son. He knows that without money and friends, she can't do anything to stop him in his efforts to take Diana away from her. Oh, it's not good for a little girl. No, Tonto, it isn't. I wish there was some way to help. So do I, Dan. I used to know Jim Weeks very well in Pecos. He'd despise his father if he knew what the old man is doing. Perhaps if I could get to see Hiram, I could talk some sense into him. Golly, do you think you could? Well, I can try, Dan. After supper, when it's dark enough, Tonto and I'll ride over to the Circle X. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. That evening after eating, all the ranch hands at the Circle X left to start a roundup on the range. Carrying a lighted lantern, Hiram took Diana and went to the big barn behind the house. Hey, but a fine new stallion today, Diana. I want to make sure the boys made him comfortable. Someday I'll own lots of fine horses. Won't I, Grandpa? Yep, yep, you sure will, honey. All these will be yours someday. All right, move up there. That's him, Diana. Ain't he a beauty? All right, get over there. As Hiram left Diana's side and moved behind the big stallion, the new horse suddenly kicked back, catching Hiram on the leg and sending him sprawling. At the same time, the lighted lantern flew from his grasp across the barn and landed in a pile of hay. Grandpa! Grandpa! My my leg must be broken. Run! Get out of here, Diana! Hay's on fire! Get help! Run! Running panic-stricken to the ranch house, Diana entered the kitchen where Maggie and her mother were talking. Mom! Mom, he's hurt and the barn's on fire. Grandpa's hurt and he'll be burned. Oh, oh glory be. What's happened, child? The horse king, Grandpa. The hay is on fire in the barn and Grandpa can't get out. Great day and all the hands away. Sure, and he'll be burned alive that he will. We've got to get to him, Maggie. We can't let him be killed out there. You stay here, Diana. Come on, Maggie. We've got to get to Mr. Week. All saints help us. There's a big blaze in there already. That's him. He's calling for help. Glory be. There's nothing we can do for him now. Help me soak myself here at the watering trough, Maggie. Quick. Uh, What are you going to do, ma'am? Why, you can't go into that blazing barn with all them crazy horses and all. I'm going to do what I can to get Mr. Week out. Meantime, you can ring the farm bell. The hands might hear it. In spite of what he's done to you, you're going in after him. Forget that, Maggie. Oh, there, that's enough. Maybe these wet clothes will protect me a little. Now I'm going into that barn. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tottle, riding in the dusk, were approaching the Circle X Ranch. You think Hiram Weeks be willing to talk to you, Kimosabe? I don't know, Toto. I hope when he learns of my friendship with his son, it will mean something to him. Anyway, it's worth a try. Ah. We soon be at ranch. It's not far now. That bell, it means trouble, Toto. Ah. It come from over that way. That where Circle Edge Ranch House is. Yes, and look, there's a reddish glow over there. That means fire. All right, let's hurry, Toto. Come on, there. Get him out. Come While Ruth went toward the barn, Maggie frantically pulled the cord that rang the big bell near the back door of the ranch house. Oh, please, the Lord, that'll bring help. But even then, it'll be too late, I'm afraid. Mama! Oh, where's Mama? Oh, no, no, be quiet, my little one. Oh, Mama! Where is she? Oh, glory be, the horses are breaking loose. Oh, if she isn't burned to death, she'll be trampled like as not. Mama went in here. She went in the burning barn. Oh, oh, Mama. Oh, hush now, child. Remember, your grandfather's lying in there, too. I don't care. I want Mama. Oh, but she's gone to try to help your grandfather, Diana. I don't want them to get burned. But especially not Mama. Will she get out? Will she, Maggie? Well, if prayers can bring her out, then she'll get out safe, child. Sure, and it is a brave woman that mother of yours is. Maggie. Maggie, I'm scared. Yes, hush now, child. All we can do is to hope and pray. Hush up now, child. Stop. Meantime, Ruth had made her way into the barn. Her knees felt weak beneath her as she saw the flames leaping before her and as frenzied horses brushed past her. I, I have to find him. <coughs> Mr. Wade! <Wheat. laughs> Thank heaven I found you. <coughs> the flames will reach you in a moment. I have to get you out somehow. You came in to save me. Yes, of course. But after what happened? <coughs> don't, don't try to talk now. Try to get your, your hand on my shoulder. Hurry. My, my leg. <coughs> you, you better save yourself. It's worse and closer. There. 
if you can lean on me, maybe. Maybe we can. Oh, that horse, he knocked us down. We'll have to. Mr. Weeks. Oh, he's unconscious. Now what can I do? I have to get him out. I have to. Outside, Maggie and Diana stood fearfully watching the fire get worse as they strained their eyes for Ruth and Mr. Weeks to appear in the doorway of the barn. Oh, sure, and it's getting worse by the minute. Oh, they can't get burned up. They can't. Oh, you poor little young one. This is a sorry day for one as young as you to see. Oh, sure. Oh, oh, sure. Oh, oh, great day, a mask, man. Forget the mask. Oh, the horse is all out. The horse is, is it? Sure, and Mr. Weeks himself is in there. What? Along with his daughter-in-law who went in to save him. Oh, may heaven bless her poor heart. Mom and oh. Grandpa is going to be killed. Maybe we can get to them. Come on, Toto. There's no time to lose. As the Lone Ranger and Toto ran into the burning barn, a group of cowboys who had heard the warning bell arrived and dismounted. Maggie told them about Ruth and Mr. Weeks and about the masked man and Indian that had gone to their rescue. Forming a bucket line, the men did what they could to keep the flames away from the barn door. The faces of all of them were strained as they hopefully glanced toward the doorway through which billowing smoke was pouring. They were about to give up what little hope they had when they heard a voice calling to them. Get back! Make room for us to get out! Oh, glory be, it's then! The masked man's coming out! The Indian's right behind it! Look, they got the boss and the girl! Let him get through! Come on, get them to the house. <coughs> they're, they're unconscious. Girl, girl, need attention, oh, quick. Oh, and sure will they be all right, will they now, sir? Mom, she's gonna be all right. We, we can't tell you. We'll do, do all we can for them. Help us get them to the ranch house now. Hurry. We'll help you, Missy. The rest of you, get those horses out and keep fighting till there's no more danger. All right. Come on, Missy. Both of you could do with a little attention yourself. While the cowboys got the remaining horses from the barn... Hiram and Ruth were taken into the ranch house and placed on carts. The Lone Ranger and Tonto recovered from the smoke quickly. Then they directed the others in giving first aid to the rancher and his daughter-in-law. Hold these splints in place, Tonto, while I put on the bandage. Uh, Someone soak another cloth in the tea and put it on Mrs. Weeks' for it. Yes, sir, I got it here right now. Now, who'd have ever thought of using strong tea to relieve burns? It's the tannic acid in the tea that does a trick. There, the bandages in place. I'll go out in the kitchen with Diana, poor child. She's out there worrying her little heart off. Both of them are breathing evenly now since we gave them artificial respiration, Toto. They should be coming to any minute. Ah, uh, that right. Look like old fellow opening eyes now, Kimasabi. Yes, he is. Have that glass of water handy, will you? Ah, uh, let me have water glass. <coughs> oh, easy, easy, Mr. Weeks. You're safe now. My, my leg, it's broken. It's scary. I've uh, put splints on your leg. They'll serve until the doctor gets here. How's the girl coming along, Toto? She'll be all right soon. The girl, Ruth, she, she tried to save me. The horse is knocked us down. Did, did you get her out? Ruth is here on the other cot. I think she'll be all right. The girl open eyes now. Jim, Jim, I tried. Couldn't you, be... you did a very brave thing, Mrs. Weeks. Jim's father's safe. Here, right alongside of you. Thank heaven. But where's Diane? I'll tell Maggie to bring her in now. Your little girl had quite a shock, but she's all right. Who, who are you? That, that mask. I just noticed. The mask doesn't matter. I uh, knew your son, Jim. You better forget the mask, boss. This hombre and his Indian friend brought you and Miss Connors out of the blazing uh, barn. I see here, you. That, that girl's name is Mrs. Weeks. She's my daughter-in-law, you savvy. But, but you said we had I a I don't care what I said. From now on, she's Ruth to me. Mrs. Weeks to the rest of you. Oh, Mama. Mama. I was so afraid. Diana, my little girl. Oh, sure, and she <laughs> called for you all the time, man, that she did. Too sad to watch the way the poor little lamb carried on wanting her mother. Diana, your your grandfather's right there in that other car. I, I'm glad Grandpa isn't killed, but I, I just want to be with you, Mama. Glory be, and that's the way it should be, says I. Tis mighty thankful Mr. Weeks should be to have such a daughter-in-law in the family. Oh, it's near to breaking my heart to see the way she was treated, the poor Colleen. 
And tis right proud I am to know young Mrs. Weeks as I. Uh, now that I've had me say, uh, I'll be packing up in the morning. Good. No, no, my dear. We need you here. My daughter, Ruth, and I, little Diana, she'll be going to school in town. You'll have to get them off each morning. Mr. Weeks, I don't know what to say. Jim would want you to call me dad, don't you? Why you didn't let me burn after the ordinary Please. way I acted? Dad, don't think about the place. Dan will be glad to hear this, Mrs. Weeks. Dan? Oh, you must be the friends that told me about. We, we had so much to thank you. Well, Maggie told me she and Diana prayed together. I'm sure we're not the ones deserving of your thanks, Mrs. Weeks. Well, we leave now so you and your father can rest. Adios. Adios. Yeah. Hey, I wonder what he meant by what he said. Who are we supposed to thank? Sure, it will take a man like you a little time to figure that one out, sir. Yeah. But I'm sure Mrs. Weeks understood him. Yes. Yes, Maggie, I understood. I wonder who that masked man was. Sure, and I can tell you that. The Indian told me he's known as the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.